And this is what I started to, to do uh, as a presentation. And I told you already, uh, Ju uh, Julie, that this was kind of one of the um, kind of a reformulation of one class that we have in our course. And um, I just wanted to first tell you about uh, why I, I started to think about this, uh, of the, about this course. And it was mainly because after my, my master's in, 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 in the University of Helsinki, I started to work uh, with my current supervisor, Irma Lemustalahti, and uh, as, a, as, a, as a work, I started to, uh, I started my research, my current research, which is uh, related to community forestry in Mexico. So she was kind of, uh, looking for someone who could do uh, some field work and interviews related to one specific case where uh, Finnish cooperation has been doing kind of, or did in the 90s quite a lot of work. And this was uh, in Mexico and um, in, in relation to, to kind of a cooperation of, of actually the University of Helsinki, Go, uh, some students going um, to, to this specific community and kind of related, uh, started to, to formulate some, some uh, management plans for these communities. And it was kind of, it was a successful experience in the way of, of looking at it uh, from, from several eyes. But uh, I also went there and I was kind of uh, trying to understand how this cooperation uh, change as well the way uh, people understand the forest and how it impacted in the long term how um, how people manage to 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 build their strategies for sustainability. At the same time, uh, I was um, looking at the kind of the idea of how development and conservation started to be together in not only in terms of of, of not only in terms of, of being uh, always together, but rather that it has been a process, an historical process. So I thought like, um, okay, um, I thought that it, this was kind of interesting stuff and it started during the time <laughs> that I was there to kind of question as well how my position as a Mexican uh, urban, coming from an urban uh, middle class uh, family and uh, later coming to Finland to do my masters and then coming back to Mexico and uh, was impacting as well my relationship with the people that I was working with. And, um, and I realized that there was a kind of many other shades that the, the kind of um, good discourse of, of successful cooperation um, didn't um, tell. Um, so then I realized that that there was this kind of idea that conserving while producing was uh, something that is starting to be more and more and more into the discourse in the community. And I just started to think about why it was this, this uh, process. So in a way I just started mainly to think as well uh, as something that, um, that uh, uh, this, Professor, Mexican professor Gonzalez Casanova already referred as internal colonialism and now we, we, we name it mainly as coloniality and how this, this um, impact uh, not only myself as a researcher, but different kind of relationships and, uh, uh, and my results as well. Uh, so just a little bit to understand the difference between colonialism and coloniality. Um, coloniality is not uh, the same as colonialism. Colonialism is mainly the, the, no, uh, the notion of 
uh, where a political and economic relationship is established by the nation over another and uh, an exercise uh, sovereign power. So usually, historically, it has been kind of an idea that gave rise to the nation states and also to the empire formation. While coloniality, although many of the colonists stopped to be colonists already, for instance, Mexico 200 years ago, uh, coloniality refers mainly to those long-standing patterns of power uh, that resulted from, from those relationships. So as you can see, for instance, in this picture, um, some of the relationships is still in 2019 can be related to the way we look at people and how they are portrayed, for instance, in advertising campaigns. Uh, how indigenous populations, for instance, in this case, are uh, positioned sometimes in, 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 in a different way and portray as, um, uh, as, for instance, in this case, lower uh, basis, lower basis. Um, so in, in, this, in, this, in this sense, uh, I, like I told to the students in the, in the in the in in our course, uh, this is this is not something that it only occurs in Mexico, but it occurs in uh, globally in different in different kind of ways, and in this sense, it brings to the idea that coloniality is not is is another side of the coin uh, of modernity, and and in this. In this sense, we should think that it has an impact on how we think science and how we think technology, and also how um, how we relate actually to like the idea of society and the idea of nature and social sciences and natural sciences. So it is not only a question of of, of social relationships. In, in, in terms of only kind of, of thinking about humans, but it also uh, has affected the way we think about, um, about what is to be natural, what is to be human. Uh, in this sense, um, the, the, the idea of, of coloniality is not, uh, is, is, uh, is, uh, the idea of nature, sorry, the idea of nature is not um, an idea that is um, unrelated to, to the coloniality. And um, so in, in this way, it is uh, practically uh, an idea that in which modern science has actually put a separation of, of other, other non-human beings. And, and human beings, um, hmm, sorry, okay. A separation between uh, human beings and, and, and other non-human beings and, and natural processes as inferior. And this is something that came from actually from, um, from political ecologies uh, from, from Latin America, because it is something that is related to that started uh, especially to be formed in um, with the with the um, with the idea of the discoveries and and how how um, the idea of, of of the colonial discoveries and the imperial formation the idea of this uh, mother man as a controller of the universe and, and of nature is uh, of, of course um, related to the idea of, of the idea of the discovery as something that needs to be um, conquered, an idea that some of the territories and human and non-human populations are exploited and and and, and in a way, um, given the, the, the circumstances, <laughs> uh, uh, 
it was not only an idea of economic justification, but also an idea that gave the, the explorers and colonizers a full understanding of what, well, not a full understanding. In their own case, there was a full understanding of what was happening. And in a way, it started to be said that this was the kind the understanding of everybody, but it was the understanding of a, of a specific position, which was the European uh, gaze. So um, this, this usually these enterprises were morally justified as um, as an idea in which the there was a duty to make the earth productive, particularly in these new discoveries. Uh, in America and in Africa and in Asia, that these, these new discoveries um, or these new territories needed to be more productive because the natives didn't know how to do it productive. And in, in a way also it was some moral justification or they, they justified their, their, their action uh, in the eyes of their Christian God as a mission to civilize those savages or for their own salvation. And um, in, in this sense, we cannot understand the rationality, uh, the rationality behind it without looking at the, 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 the idea of the civilization mission that, uh, that is quite related as well to the idea of improvement that in many development uh, discourses is still prevalent. So, um, so in this sense, uh, we can relate that um, historically um, in, this, in this whole process that took uh, several, um, several um, thousand years, um, thousand, sorry, centuries, several centuries, that um, the, the, the territories were um, also transformed into, into different logics. And in this way, it was an, a logic in which um, uh, Anna Singh, who is an anthropologist, um, has named the plantation logic in which uh, in which in which the way of looking at the world was the idea of making it order in to accumulate capital and this transformed particularly the bodies of african slaves indigenous populations and and other uh, animals uh, into labor and nature was transformed into land and, and a land that could be um, exchanged and, uh, and sold. And also the labor could be exchanged and sold and, uh, and from where capital could be accumulated. In this illustration, for instance, um, this is a, a view, uh, um, well, it's not an illustration, it's actually a, a um, picture of, of how uh, sugarcane uh, plantations were uh, done in the Caribbean during the colonial times and how they were ordered and how labor was organized in those, in those, um, in those islands and what the radical changes the those plantations made to these natures, uh, well, these territories, and also to the population that inhabited the island, because it was first um, the native populations were either um, uh, killed or uh, enslaved, and also other uh, slave labor from African. Uh, continent from the African continent came. So we could see already that the kind of population that it in, uh, inhabit this island um, has changed and the whole idea of the island has changed. At the same time, uh, 
those, those places that were not inside of the idea of the plantation, uh, of the idea of this intervention of the white man, European white man, then became understood as wilderness. Um, and this is kind of interesting because although we think about this is historically over, uh, this is something that is still the idea of the plantation is, um, is remanent in some ideas of civic culture and forestry. Uh, that how, for instance, a, a normal forest or a good forest should look a uh, northern forest should look and what kind of the um, wild forest uh, can have, um, should look in, in this sense. Um, so in, in a way, this idea of, of the wilderness as well um, bring the idea of, of who knows, uh, who knows this nature and who knows, uh, who can actually um, know this, this nature of this wild nature. And this is kind of related as well to the past of, our, of many of our disciplines like geography, anthropology, forestry, and biology, for instance, where scientific, like the fathers of this, of this, um, of these disciplines were actually many of them white men uh, that that wanted to go to the colonies and uh, started to do their uh, the scientific explorations and how they, uh, for instance, their their accounts of the wild and pristine tropical nature became exoticized as subjects to be discovered, analyzed, reordered, and later intervened either for product for productive, um, for, for included it in the production or to conserve them as, as uh, wild, wild nature. And this, this brings to the many of the kind of ideas that we have about what means to, to conserve uh, nature. And um, of course, this, uh, there is a huge, there was doing, I don't know, like since the 30s, a huge debate uh, about if in conservation parks or conservation areas, uh, people could live or, or, or as in the US uh, happened quite a lot during the early uh, 20th century, people should it be displaced in order to conserve nature. And, um, this, of course, was an idea that that it is not um, uh, that it has been kind of contested or contested in many ways, um, and um, especially during the the nineties, well, the eighties or nineties, um, the the emergence of, of diverse struggles uh, for indigenous and peasant territorial rights, um, kind of challenge the idea of this divide between nature and, uh, and society that the enlightenment and this um, and the modernity bring to, 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 the, to the main, um, to our ideas of what is to, to be na natural, what, to, uh, what is to be human and what is to be um, natural. And, um, and of course, this was in many, in many ways, um, in, may, in many ways, this, this was as well challenged by, the, by these struggles. And, and I'm talking here about Latin America and some Asian countries where, where uh, other solutions were proposed, for instance, the community forestry or community-based conservation uh, as a solution of the, the, the idea of what of, of the crisis that were present, we are present now, it is present now, but the ecological crisis that at the time were thinking that, that 
this debate between keeping people or not into key ecological spots, for instance, I don't know, like the Amazonia or in, uh, in Africa, the savannas and, and so on. So, um, so in many, in many countries, these other ideas of how, how uh, natural or how conservation, natural conservation should be uh, done where we're, we're, um, we're thinking that, um, that, that in a way to recognize at the same time the rights of the, of the populations that inhabited those, those places, it is also important to kind of uh, reinvent those ideas of, of, natural, uh, of nature or territory or in the way to reinvent what is to be a human and the relationship between the human and the nature. Uh, so in these terms, um, the territory became quite a key, key idea in which, in, which, uh, in which it became together the idea of the nature is not uh, something that is wild as in terms of not human intervention, but it's always intervened by humans. And, um, and although that um, many populations have resisted, I guess, the dispossession and uh, that, that many of these ideas of conservation, the parks and conservation have done, um, there is still some 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 debates that um, that have been quite important and are really important currently, and this is uh, something that that I have been kind of studied more uh, the idea of how uh, community based conservation and community forestry in particular could be uh, something that. Uh, in the current uh, arena where, uh, where also market-based solutions are promoted as a way of, of uh, sustainable development can bring, uh, can be actually something that are a solution. Um, so in, in that way, it, it, it has been important for me to kind of reflect on, on on how, how we are influenced by several understandings of, of, of the economy and, and what is ecology and in a way, what strategies really actually are, um, are justified uh, as a good way of sustainability. And um, in these debates, for instance, uh, it is important to, to remember that um, environmental problems are not isolated to, to, to the economic uh, uh, discourses. And currently, uh, the debate that is quite um, prevalent, prevalent in, in spe especially in the global south, has been the idea of how much um, economic growth and conservation can live together. Um, particularly the idea that uh, mainstream sustainable development uh, could be now be uh, reappropriating these struggles of, or reformulating these struggles only to to kind of marketize them as something that that uh, brings solutions, but but something that is not necessarily given um, to the populations uh, the chance or the um, kind of fair chances of incorporate their own knowledges and their own ways of of looking at nature and. Um, and ways of living. So in a way, it is kind of um, a debate currently 
in which uh, it is important to consider how much uh, sustainable, like this kind of mainstream sustainable development um, discourses really recognize the diversity of, of the ways of being in the world and understand uh, the world and the economy uh, as a different way of only growth and improvement uh, as as um, something that needs to be done. So uh, as well, there has been quite a lot of discussion in terms of how much, um, for instance, other uh, kind of categories in in this in this um, in this conservation. Uh, I mean, categories or uh, categories of people. Uh, for instance, uh, the people that are racialized and um, and women particularly have been kind of targeted differently in ways that the division of labor has been totally different, especially in conservation and the burdens and the benefits of those that um, that actually are working in in conservation in the field. Uh, can be really um, can give uh, can be really kind of uh, be fair for for them, like in terms, for instance, of income or in terms of how much they participate in decision making. So, for instance, in my own work, uh, I have been. I have been uh, questioning how women, for instance, in with the new, uh, with new, new approaches of gender mainstreaming into community forestry, are uh, although they, they, this is all uh, framed as a matter of gender equality, they these these ideas have been probably uh, uh, trying more to discipline them and into incorporate them into cheap labor in conservation rather than actually securing their their lives and their rights um, and this is um, something that has i have been kind of trying to 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 put in the discussion as well because um sustainability can be thought in different ways and cannot, it isn't sometimes really idolized as something that we have to achieve uh, in a particular way. So it is interesting that actually sustainability has, it is a really uh, flexible, uh, a really flexible um, concept that has bring the idea that sustainable development and their solutions actually can be um, thought based on different questions. For instance, what really we want to sustain? Is it the, the, the economy? Is it our way of current life or what it is? Uh, or is it like uh, humanity or is it the, the, the world? And why it matters? And and for who it matters. Uh, and in these terms, I think sustainability needs to be rethought and um, not as a, uh, just an umbrella concept, but also uh, I do think this is my <laughs> personal, personal opinion on, on, this, on this question is that until sustainable development doesn't contest the, the current uh, economic system, system that produces the ecological crisis we are living, then it, it is, it is uh, pretty, uh, 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 it is almost uh, impossible that we could decolonize it or name it as an anti colonial project. Because it maintains the systems of power and domination that actually give this division of labor and that uh, subjugated life 
uh, already from 500, um, 500 years ago. Um, so in this way, and uh, if we still uh, equate sustainability with economic growth, then uh, we are keeping the coloniality of, of nature society dichotomy or the division of this nature society as a, as a pattern that is still is there. And my question is always if, if these market-based solutions, for instance, um, payment for ecosystem services or other or ecotourism, uh, for instance, uh, actually can work, uh, or is that is another way of colonizing uh, or continue colonizing human and non-human beings? And I take the, the idea of ecotourism uh, in, in this example. I'm, I'm not studying ecotourism, but it has been quite, uh, quite um, labeled among many of the community forestry as a way of not, or, or, or doing this uh, ecotourism activities as a way of no intervention. But uh, actually, it is interesting that many of these ecotourism projects uh, continue to maintain this idea of, of wilderness uh, and the separation that other people who are living in the cities or who are uh, somewhere uh, in the global north can come back, can be, uh, can co go there uh, or come back <laughs> in, uh, to those uh, natural, um, places, which is actually, again, uh, keeping the separation of what is human, what is civilized, and what is wild, and what is na um, natural. And at the same time, um, uh, it gives this idea that we are still consuming uh, nature. So that's all from my side. Thank you so much. And um, I have some publications here, but you can see it and some of the references that I that I use in this presentation and in this class. 